Welcome back uh, to the lecture series on uh, metrology. Now we will start uh, module 11 on uh, machine tool metrology. In this uh, lecture we will be covering uh, the following topics. What is the need for machine tool uh, metrology? What are the various uh, uh, instruments used for conducting uh, the alignment tests on machine tools? and what are the different uh, alignment tests conducted on uh, machine tools and then we will cover uh, some tests on uh, lathe and uh, some tests on drilling uh, machine and then uh, we will uh, discuss about uh, general inspection of uh, machine tools. Now uh, we will start lecture number 1 under uh, module uh, number 11. In this lecture we will be covering uh, the following topics what is the need for uh, machine tool uh, metrology, what are the various uh, instruments used to conduct uh, alignment tests and what are the uh, different alignment tests normally conducted on the machine tools such as uh, flatness test of uh, tables, parallelism tests, perpendicularity tests etc. And then we will uh, uh, discuss about some uh, specific uh, geometrical tests conducted on uh, engine lathe. Now let us uh, try to understand what is the need for uh, machine tool uh, metrology. There is a continuous uh, demand for uh, highly accurately machined uh, components. Uh, because of this uh, considerable uh, research in uh, machine tool design uh, uh, has been uh, carried out and uh, uh, machine tools are uh, being uh, built up with uh, high geometric uh, accuracy. A distinct uh, field of uh, metrology has uh, matured uh, which is concerned uh, primarily with the geometric tests of uh, the alignment accuracy of machine tools under uh, static uh, conditions and uh, uh, there is a need for conducting uh, uh, the alignment uh, accuracy tests uh, when the machine tool is being uh, loaded that is uh, uh, when the machining is uh, being carried out uh, whether uh, the alignment is proper or not. So for that uh, practical tests uh, are uh, being uh, conducted. Now in order to ascertain the condition or performance of the machine tool uh, inspection charts uh, have been uh, developed by uh, standards organization. Uh, these uh, charts uh, will uh, enable the manufacturer or inspector to check the various uh, alignments uh, of machine tools against uh, prescribed uh, limits. Alignment tests uh, uh, check uh, the relationship between various uh, elements of the machine tool uh, such as uh, forms and positions of machine tool parts and displacement relative to one another when the machine tool is uh, unloaded. For example, uh, whether uh, the positioning of uh, the tile stock with respect to uh, the spindle axis is proper or not, whether uh, the saddle movement is parallel to the lathe axis uh, uh, is uh, okay. Uh, whether the movement of the tool uh, slide is parallel uh, to the spindle axis, whether it moves uh, uh, perpendicular, what is the perpendicularity of movement of uh, the cross slide uh, with respect to the lathe axis. Such things are uh, checked during uh, the alignment test. Now let us discuss uh, the various instruments used uh, to conduct acceptance tests on uh, machine tools, alignment tests on machine tools. The very first uh, instrument is uh, the dial uh, gauge. I should uh, have uh, a minimum uh, uh, measuring uh, pressure. You should not ex exert too much of pressure on the 
the machine tool part. The measuring uh, pressure uh, range should be between uh, 200 uh, to 100 uh, grams. The graduations on the dial uh, must be very much uh, clear and accurate to 0.01 uh, millimeter. We can observe uh, a dial indicator with uh, the least count of uh, 0.01 uh, millimeter and uh, range of uh, 0 to 10 uh, millimeter. The dial gaze uh, must be fixed to robust and uh, stiff uh, bases in order to avoid displacements due to shock or uh, vibration. Uh, magnetic uh, stands uh, are normally used for mounting the dial indicator on uh, the machine tool parts. Test uh, mandrel is another important uh, instrument used uh, while conducting uh, the alignment test. To, these are used to check the true running of uh, spindle and to check uh, whether uh, the movement of uh, slide is uh, parallel to the axis and uh, to check the these uh, test mandrels are normally made of uh, steel. They are uh, hardened, stress relieved and ground and they are made to a length from 100 to 300 millimeter. The quality of the mandrel, especially the straightness and uh, the roundness of uh, the mandrel is very, very important uh, in order to get uh, accurate uh, results. Two types of uh, test mandrels are uh, used. The first one is uh, the mandrel with uh, cylindrical surface and a taper uh, shank. You can see here this is this portion is uh, cylindrical and at the end there is a tapered uh, shank. Uh, which will go into the taper bore of the main uh, spindle. Other uh, type is a cylindrical mandrel that can be held between the uh, centers. You can see uh, the centers are uh, provided on uh, both uh, ends of uh, the cylindrical uh, mandrel to fix the cylindrical mandrel between the centers. Now uh, another important uh, instrument is uh, straight uh, edge. So these are uh, normally made of uh, cast iron or uh, steel. We can see a view of uh, straight edge. Uh, these uh, should be heavy, well ribbed and uh, free of uh, internal uh, stresses. The uh, two surfaces, the top surface and uh, the bottom surface, uh, surfaces should be parallel to each other. The another important uh, uh, instrument is a standard square. The standard uh, square uh, must have a wider uh, bearing uh, uh, surface. The error at the top should be less than uh, plus or minus 0 0.01 millimeter. So when we move the dial indicator from bottom to the top, at the end, at the top end, the error should be less than uh, plus or minus 0 0.01 millimeter. And for a precision square, the error at the top should be uh, less than plus minus 0 0.005 millimeter. Now spirit uh, levels are also used while conducting uh, uh, alignment test on machine tools. Uh, to check uh, the flatness of uh, bases and uh, uh, tables and to check uh, the straightness of uh, guide waves. So these are uh, used in, uh, sh in the shape of a bubble tube uh, which is mounted on a cast iron uh, base. You can see a view of uh, spirit uh, level. Two main types uh, are used. One is uh, horizontal type and another one is frame uh, spirit level with uh, a sensitivity of 0.04 to 0.06 uh, millimeters per meter for each uh, deflected division. Another important uh, instrument used is uh, auto collimator which is used to check the deflections of long beds in horizontal, vertical and inclined uh, planes. Uh, the, we can check the deflection of uh, guide waves uh, 
using the, the autocollimator as shown here. Uh, waviness uh, meters are used to record uh, the surface uh, waviness of uh, the beds and uh, the tables with a magnification of 50 is to 1. Work uh, tables are checked for flatness uh, using a straight edge or uh, spirit level. The work tables uh, should be either flat or uh, concave. If uh, the table surface is convex like this, then what happens is uh, we keep the work piece uh, on the table and when we clamp uh, the workpiece using the clamps, because of the clamping force, the thin uh, work pieces may deflect and they may bend like this. To avoid that, the work pieces uh, or tables are made flat or uh, if there is any deviation, it should be in the form of uh, concavity. So this is checked uh, using the uh, uh, spirit levels and uh, straight edges. Columns, uprights and base plates uh, are checked for deviation from the vertical and uh, horizontal planes. That means the columns of the machine tools whether they are uh, perpendicular to the base plates or not. So that is uh, checked using uh, dial indicators and squares. Practical tests are uh, conducted uh, by machining the work pieces and uh, uh, appropriate uh, feeds and speed rates are uh, used uh, for machining and then uh, the workpiece after machining is checked for uh, size, form and uh, surface uh, finish whether the sizes uh, are uh, okay or not or if there is any larger uh, deviation from the uh, shape and size whether uh, we are getting uh, the uh, cylindrical objects or uh, tapered objects or uh, a drum shaped uh, objects. So all those things we can uh, check by conducting practical tests. Also we can check the surface finish that is obtained uh, using the surface uh, tester. So we can uh, refer uh, IS 1878 part 3 and uh, uh, for uh, test chart for conducting tests on uh, lathes and we can refer IS 2425 uh, test chart for uh, pillar type vertical uh, drilling uh, machine for conducting alignment tests on uh, drilling machines. Now let us uh, discuss on the alignment, alignment tests conducted on uh, uh, engine lathe. We can see the picture of uh, engine uh, lathe. There are many sub-assemblies. So we have uh, bed uh, uh, sub-assembly and then we have carriage or uh, saddle sub-assembly and then we have the tile stock uh, sub-assembly, head stock uh, sub-assembly and then we have uh, the uh, quick change gearbox here, apron. So now uh, during uh, assembly we have to carry out uh, the various alignment tests on these uh, uh, sub-assemblies uh, to check whether uh, they are aligned properly and uh, once they are assembled uh, we have to check whether uh, all the sub-assemblies are uh, uh, aligned uh, properly uh, to each other whether uh, the movements of various sub-assemblies is uh, parallel to the main uh, spindle axis whether the movement of uh, the tile stock is parallel uh, to the axis and then saddle movement whether it is parallel to axis such things uh, uh, we have to check and if there is any error uh, uh, by scraping uh, the appropriate uh, surfaces uh, we can uh, uh, change the alignment and we can set the alignments. Now one uh, alignment test that is uh, before conducting any alignment test it is very essential that uh, the leveling of the machine uh, should be checked whether uh, 
the lake is properly leveled and installed that uh, we have to check. Uh, we have to check uh, leveling in uh, both the directions, longitudinal direction as well as the transverse uh, direction. So along the length of the bed we have to check uh, the alignment that is longitudinal direction and perpendicular to the length of the bed uh, we have to check uh, uh, the leveling in the transverse uh, direction. Now uh, approximately the saddle is kept at the middle of uh, the uh, guideways and then uh, we have to use a, a precision uh, spirit level. At various uh, positions we have to keep the spirit uh, level and uh, we have to note down the reading. This procedure we have to uh, repeat for both the guideways and if there is any error uh, uh, it should not exceed uh, 0 0.01 to 0 0.02 mm for any length of uh, 500 millimeters. So this is the length of the bed. Uh, similarly, uh, alignment uh, should be checked in the transverse direction. For that we have to keep uh, a bridge piece on uh, the guide base and then we have to place uh, the precision level and then uh, we have to note down the reading. Again in the transfer direction also the error should not exceed uh, 0 0.01 to 0 0.02 mm for any length of uh, 500 mm. Uh, also this uh, uh, experiment or this uh, check will give whether the guideways are uh, straight or uh, not. So when we keep uh, the spirit levels at various uh, positions along the uh, bed uh, guideway, We have to keep the spirit level along the length of the bed at various positions and then we should note down the reading and uh, this will indicate whether uh, the guideway is uh, straight or uh, is there any deviation from uh, straightness. If there is any deviation, uh, it should be in the convex uh, direction only. That means the guideway should be convex. The reason is uh, because of uh, the weight of uh, the saddle and because of the action of uh, uh, cutting forces, the, bed, uh, the guideway tends to become uh, uh, straight. So that is why initially it should be uh, convex. If it is concave, then uh, the effect of concavity will uh, increase with the action of uh, the weight of uh, saddle and uh, cutting forces. Also another reason is if uh, the guideway is uh, convex because of the continuous movement of uh, saddle the surface of the guideway will uh, own out and it becomes uh, straight. Now if the leveling is not proper it may be corrected by putting the setting wedges or uh, shim plates under the support feet of uh, the lathe. That means you can uh, adjust uh, the, we can uh, insert the shim plates or uh, wedges for uh, leveling purpose. Now uh, true running of locating cylinder of uh, means spindle. This uh, test is uh, conducted to check whether uh, the locating uh, cylinder is uh, running truly or uh, not. We can see the uh, assembly drawing of uh, the main spindle of uh, a lathe. It is supported by bearings at uh, both the ends, the front end and uh, rear end. We can see the photographic view of uh, the assembly of uh, main spindle, the check, the spindle uh, supported by bearings. Now uh, we can see the locating uh, cylinder uh, surface here, the locating cylinder surface. We can also see the rear view of uh, the chuck and also the face plate. The locating uh, cylinder is uh, provided on the main spindle to locate uh, the chuck or uh, face uh, plate. So this uh, face of the check will go and fit uh, on uh, the locating uh, cylinder. The locating cylinder uh, should uh, run uh, uh, without any run out. 
if there is any runout of locating cylinder then uh, the check and uh, face plate will also uh, run uh, uh, without uh, trueness so we don't get uh, the proper geometry on uh, the work pieces now uh, to check the runout of uh, the main uh, uh, spindle locating cylinder uh, we have to use uh, a dial indicator the plunger of the dial indicator uh, should touch uh, the locating uh, cylinder surface that means the plunger should touch the locating uh, uh, cylinder uh, surface and we should uh, slowly uh, rotate the locating cylinder and then we should note down the reading of uh, the dial indicator for true running of uh, the locating cylinder there should not be any reading in the dial indicator if there is any uh, out of running then uh, the indicator will show the readings so in that case uh, again we have to finish uh, machine this should the surface of locating cylinder should be finished again and then again uh, the true running uh, should be checked and then finally it can be assembled into the headstock. Now uh, we will discuss about uh, axial slip of uh, main uh, spindle and uh, true running of uh, shoulder face of uh, spindle uh, nose. Again we can see the assembly of uh, the spindle. The chuck is uh, mounted on uh, the spindle uh, nose. We can see the uh, bearings which uh, support the main spindle. Now uh, we can see here this is the shoulder face. This is uh, locating cylinder and this is the shoulder uh, face of uh, spindle uh, nose. The check will be it will come in contact the back surface of uh, the check or face plate will come in contact with uh, this uh, shoulder uh, face it is uh, essential that uh, there should not be any axial slip of uh, the spindle so if there is a uh, axial uh, slip then it is nothing but the axial movement of spindle then uh, the chuck will also move uh, axially and uh, that will affect uh, the uh, machining uh, accuracy particularly in case of uh, screw cutting and it is uh, uh, very essential that uh, this uh, shoulder face uh, uh, should be perpendicular to the axis now uh, while measuring uh, we have to mount uh, the dial indicator on some fixed uh, part of the machine and the plunger should touch uh, the shoulder uh, face that means uh, the plunger should come in contact with the shoulder uh, face and uh, we have to take readings at two diametrically opposite uh, positions one reading here and slowly we have to rotate the shoulder face and then second reading we have to take here the difference will give the uh, axial slip now uh, Axial uh, slip is uh, movement of uh, spindle which uh, follows the same pattern and is due to the manufacturing uh, error of uh, the shoulder face. The plunger of the dial indicator rests on the face of the shoulder as shown here and uh, the dial gauge is uh, clamped to the bed. The locating cylinder is uh, then uh, rotated. So, this locating cylinder is uh, slowly uh, rotated and uh, two readings are uh, uh, taken from uh, the dial indicator. One reading here and we have to rotate it through 180 degrees and the second reading we have to take on the dial indicator. The difference will give the axial uh, slip. The readings uh, are taken at two diametrically opposite points. Error includes the error in bearings. If there are any errors in the bearing then also there will be axial slip. And the shoulder face not perpendicular to the axis. Now you can see here, if this shoulder face is at uh, some uh, uh, inclination like this, so then also we get, uh, when we rotate it, there will be axial uh, slip and uh, we get the readings here. 
and uh, sometimes the face the shoulder face this is the uh, locating cylinder and this is the shoulder face maybe there are some irregularities in the shoulder face because of that also we get uh, axial uh, slip so particularly during uh, screw cutting uh, pitch of the screw cut will vary due to the axial uh, slip so it is very essential that the machining of the shoulder face is very very important a lot of care should be taken and uh, precision uh, finish machining process should be used for uh, finishing the shoulder face and we should see that it is uh, the surface is perpendicular to the uh, the spindle uh, axis when the shoulder face is not perpendicular to the spindle axis say there is some inclination like this then when we this is the locating cylinder when we mount uh, the check or face plate so there will be some inclination like this the chuck will be at some inclination with respect to the spindle uh, axis because of this when we mount uh, the work piece in the three jaw chuck or face plate again the axis of the job will not coincide uh, with uh, axis of uh, spindle there will be some inclination because of this when we give the cuts so we get uh, tapered uh, surfaces so to avoid this it is necessary that the shoulder face should be perpendicular uh, with respect to spindle axis now the next uh, test is uh, true running of headstock uh, center so the, the spindle inside uh, there will be a uh, tapered uh, socket will be there and we mount uh, the live center or uh, head headstock center in this uh, taper socket now the rotation of this uh, live center uh, should be true there should not be any wobbling of uh, the uh, live center if it wobbles then uh, the work piece uh, will also wobble along with uh, the live center uh, because of this uh, the eccentricity will result on uh, the work pieces in order to test the true running dial uh, gauge uh, plunger should be placed on the tapered uh, surface the plunger should be perpendicular uh, to the tapered surface of the live center as shown here and uh, the slowly the live center should be rotated and uh, dial gauge uh, readings are uh, taken the dial reading should not exceed 0 0.03 millimeter while conducting uh, this experiment a force f uh, is applied on to the uh, spindle or center in order to reduce the axial uh, play. Another uh, very important uh, test is parallelism of the main spindle to saddle uh, movement in uh, both the planes. This uh, test is uh, conducted in horizontal plane as well as in the vertical uh, plane. You can see here we have uh, the spindle and uh, the a mandrel with the taper shank is uh, mounted in the taper socket of uh, the spindle and uh, the plunger of uh, the dial indicator is pressed uh, on the mandrel and uh, the saddle is uh, moved slowly and uh, the dial indicator readings are uh, recorded if uh, the spindle axis is uh, not parallel to gateways then uh, taper uh, results on the work piece so when we move the dial indicator from one end to the other end in the vertical uh, plane so the dial indicator will uh, show uh, whether uh, the guideways are uh, moving uh, parallel with uh, spindle axis or uh, not now the permissible uh, error is uh, 0 0.02 millimeter uh, per uh, 300 millimeter length of the movement in uh, both the planes so when we conduct this uh, experiment uh, the free end of the mandrel 
in the vertical uh, plane should be rising so in the vertical plane this uh, free end uh, should be upwards uh, like this if there is any error the free end should be upwards compared to this uh, end in order to counteract uh, the weight of mandrelar uh, workpiece so because of the self weight the uh, workpiece it will tend to bend like this so that will uh, nullify the uh, effect of uh, parallelism uh, error if this end free end is upwards similarly in the case of uh, horizontal uh, plane the play free end uh, should be towards uh, tool to oppose the tool pressure in the horizontal plane the free end should be towards uh, the tool so when the uh, cutting action takes place because of the cutting force tool pressure the work piece will bend in the other uh, direction against uh, the now in the horizontal plane the free end should be towards the uh, tool uh, to oppose the tool uh, pressure now you can uh, see the photographic views of uh, the test the mandrel taper shank mandrel is inserted into the spindle and uh, the dial indicator plunger is in contact with the surface of uh, the mandrel and uh, it is mounted on uh, the saddle now slowly uh, at this place that is near uh, the uh, spindle nose so the reading is set to zero and slowly the saddle is uh, moved in the longitudinal uh, direction and what is the reading at the other end so that is uh, uh, recorded so the difference will be what is the amount of uh, error so this uh, uh, experiment shows the uh, parallelism test in the vertical uh, plane now here we can observe the parallelism of uh, the main uh, spindle to the saddle moment in the horizontal uh, plane so the saddle uh, the plunger uh, will be in contact with the mantle like this in the horizontal plane then the saddle is uh, slowly moved here uh, the reading is uh, set to zero and uh, at the other end we have to slowly move the saddle at the other end what is the reading of the dial indicator uh, we have to record the difference will give what is the amount of uh, error parallelism error now another uh, test that is normally conducted is uh, true running of taper socket in the main uh, spindle so now we have uh, the spindle uh, nose the axis of uh, the spindle and there is a tapered uh, socket inside now whether the axis of this taper socket is uh, concentric with the main spindle axis so that uh, we have to check sometimes uh, this uh, tapered uh, uh, taper socket uh, axis may be at some angle like this so this is the main spindle axis that taper socket axis may be at some angle with respect to the main uh, spindle axis or uh, uh, sometimes uh, the tapered socket axis is parallel but there is some offset like this so now you can see this is the axis of tapered socket it is uh, offset with uh, the main uh, spindle axis because of these uh, errors eccentric and uh, tapered uh, jobs uh, will be produced now uh, we have to check whether uh, the uh, true running error is uh, within the prescribed uh, limits to conduct uh, this uh, test a mandrel is fitted into the tapered uh, hole you can see here we have the mandrel with the taper shank that is fitted into the taper socket of the main spindle and then slowly the mandrel is uh, rotated the spindle is rotated so that the mandrel is also rotated and uh, dial gauge readings are taken at uh, two extreme places that means initially we have to keep the dial indicator near the spindle and uh, 
where to slowly rotate the spindle and what is the amount of error that we have to note down and then we have to move uh, the dial indicator to another uh, place at a distance of uh, 300 mm uh, from the spindle and we have to see that plunger is in contact with the mandrel and again the mandrel is rotated and uh, the reading is uh, taken. So in both the cases error uh, should not exceed uh, 0.02 mm at uh, both the places. Now let us discuss about uh, the parallelism of tile stock guideways with uh, the carriage uh, movement. So in this picture we can observe that uh, we have uh, one set of guideways that is uh, the inverted uh, V guideway and one uh, flat guideway for the movement of the tile stock and we have uh, one uh, flat uh, guideway and one inverted uh, guideway the second set of uh, guideways for the movement of uh, the carriage. Now these two sets of uh, guideways uh, should be parallel to each other. Uh, if the guideways, tile stock guideways are not parallel with uh, the carriage movement, that is if uh, the tile stock guideways are not parallel with uh, the guideways of saddle, then there will be some offset of the tile stock uh, center and uh, this results in a taper uh, turning when the job is uh, held between the uh, two centers. In order to carry out this uh, experiment, we have to mount uh, the uh, dial indicator on uh, the carriage and then uh, the plunger should touch uh, on uh, the extended uh, quill of uh, the tile stock and then uh, uh, we have to clamp uh, the tile stock as well as uh, tile stock uh, sleeve and then we have to note down the reading and then we have to unclamp the tile stock uh, we have to move the saddle and uh, the tile stock together so that uh, this uh, distance is uh, kept constant and then again at the second place on the bed we again we have to clamp uh, the tile stock and tile stock sleeve and then we have to take the read like this at uh, two three places along the length of the bed we have to take the reading and uh, the maximum error should not exceed uh, 0 0.04 millimeter. So this experiment we have to conduct in both the planes and in uh, both the planes vertical plane as well as horizontal plane error should not exceed 0 0.04 millimeter. Now let us uh, discuss about uh, movement of upper slide parallel with uh, main spindle in uh, vertical uh, plane. We can observe uh, in this uh, photograph, uh, we have uh, the guideways, the guideways on the bed and then we have uh, the saddle and then uh, the cross uh, slide, uh, cross slide and then above cross slide we have another uh, slide which is uh, upper slide or tool uh, slide. Now the movement of the upper slide should be parallel to the spindle uh, axis otherwise the uh, tapered uh, components uh, will result. So this uh, test is conducted only in the vertical plane. The reason is we can observe here uh, there is a provision in the horizontal plane uh, there is a provision for adjusting uh, the swiveling in order to cut uh, the taper. The upper slide can be swiveled uh, like this. So the, the protractor we can see here. We can uh, swivel this upper slide to any angle, required angle in order to get tapers. So this test is conducted only in the vertical uh, plane. So we have to keep uh, the stand magnetic stand on the upper slide and uh, the dial indicator should touch the mandrel as shown here and then we have to take the reading we have to slowly move uh, the upper slide and we have to note down the readings the difference in readings will give uh, the amount of uh, error the permissible uh, error is uh, 0 0.04 millimeter per uh, 300 uh, millimeter and we should see whether uh, the free end of the mandrel should be in the uh, 
upward position to counteract the weight of the jaw. Now we can see how to conduct the tool slide movement parallelism with main spindle. The mandrel is fitted into the spindle and the dial indicator plunger is in contact with the mandrel. The magnetic stand is placed on the tool slide. Now slowly the tool slide is moved and the dial indicator readings are taken. The difference in readings give the error. Now we will discuss about another important test that is conducted. Uh, the parallelism of tile stock sleeve to the saddle uh, movement. We can uh, see here we have uh, the body of uh, tile stock. Inside we have uh, the sleeve, tile stock sleeve, and it has uh, a tapered uh, socket inside in which uh, the dead center uh, can be inserted. We can uh, see the assembly drawing here the dead center and then we have the sleeve, tile stock uh, sleeve which can be moved in and out using this uh, wheel. You can see the photographic view. This is the tile stock uh, sleeve and uh, dead center. For uh, the jobs uh, held between the two centers that is uh, uh, lie center and uh, dead center the axis of dead center should be coaxial with the job axis in uh, both uh, planes that is horizontal plane as well as uh, vertical uh, plane. Now if uh, this is not there then uh, the uh, tapered work uh, pieces uh, will uh, result. We don't get uh, the cylindrical objects because of uh, this uh, uh, shift. Now, how do we uh, test with this uh, parallelism? We have to extend uh, the sleeve to the maximum uh, extent and then we have to put uh, the dial indicator stand on the saddle as shown here and uh, the dial indicator plunger should touch uh, the sleeve and then we have to lock uh, the sleeve as well as uh, the tight stock as in normal uh, working condition and slowly the saddle should be uh, moved and uh, the readings are uh, taken. So the error, parallelism error should not exceed uh, 0 0.02 millimeter per 100 mm movement of uh, saddle in both the planes. Now I can uh, see the photographic uh, views here. So we have the tight stock body and uh, the sleeve of uh, tight stock. It is fully extended and the dial indicator plunger is in contact with uh, the external surface of uh, the sleeve and uh, the dial indicator stand is placed on the saddle. And uh, after locking the tight stock body and uh, sleeve uh, near the body we have to keep uh, the dial indicator and we should adjust the reading to zero and then uh, uh, we have to slowly move the saddle so that uh, the uh, dial indicator moves to the other end of uh, the sleeve and then uh, the reading is uh, noted. So this uh, reading should not exceed uh, 0 0.02 per 100 uh, moment of uh, the saddle and the free end of the sleeve should be rising upwards in the vertical plane to counteract uh, the weight of the work. So when we load the workpiece between centers, uh, because the weight of uh, the workpiece will be acting on this uh, center and uh, the uh, sleeve tends to move down. So initially the free end should be rising uh, upwards before uh, loading the workpiece. So similarly, in the horizontal plane also, this uh, test is uh, conducted. Uh, you can see here, the plunger is in contact with uh, the sleeve in the horizontal plane and then slowly the saddle is moved and at the other end, the reading is uh, taken. And this reading should not exceed 0.02 millimeter per 100 mm 
and the sleeve should be inclined towards the tool uh, in the horizontal plane to oppose the tool pressure. So the tool pressure will be acting like this. So if there is any parallelism error, this free end should be towards the tool. Now uh, we will uh, discuss about uh, parallelism of tile stock sleeve taper bore to the saddle uh, movement. We can see here we have uh, the tile stock and then we have uh, the tile stock uh, sleeve. So the tile stock uh, sleeve uh, has a taper uh, bore. So this is the axis of uh, sleeve and then we have the taper uh, bore and we can uh, fit uh, the tapered uh, dead centers in the bore. Now it is necessary that uh, the axis of uh, taper bore uh, should be parallel to the saddle uh, movement otherwise uh, tapered uh, work pieces uh, will result. Now in order to conduct uh, this uh, test mandrel is fixed to the taper uh, bore that we can observe here mandrel is fitted into the taper bore of sleeve and the dial indicator is fixed to the tool post and the plunger dial plunger is pressed on the mandrel and then uh, we have to lock uh, the sleeve as well as uh, tie stock as in uh, normal uh, working condition and then we have to slowly move the saddle and we have to note down the dial indicator uh, readings. The error should not exceed uh, 0 0.03 mm per uh, 300 movement of saddle and the free end of uh, the mandrel uh, should be towards uh, frontwards in the horizontal uh, plane to counteract the tool uh, pressure and uh, the error should not exceed uh, 0 0.04 millimeter per 300 mm. Uh, the free end of the mandrel towards upwards in the vertical plane to counteract uh, the weight of the work piece. Now you can uh, see here the photographic views of uh, the test. The mandrel is fitted into the taper bore of uh, the sleeve. The plunger is in contact with uh, the outer surface of uh, the mandrel and the dial indicator is uh, fixed to the saddle. So in this position uh, the uh, reading is adjusted to zero and then slowly the saddle is uh, moved after uh, locking the tile stock and uh, sleeve and then the dial indicator is moved to the other end of the mandrel and then again the reading uh, is uh, taken. Now in the horizontal plane also the test is uh, repeated. You can see here the dial indicator in contact with the plunger. The reading is adjusted to zero and then slowly the saddle is moved. Now, now the dial plunger, dial plunger is in contact with the mandrel at the end. So again the reading uh, is uh, taken. The difference is the amount of error in the horizontal uh, plane. Now let us discuss about uh, alignment of both the centers in the vertical plane that is uh, the headstock center height from the guide base and uh, tie stock center height from the guide base uh, should be same. If uh, the heights are uh, different then uh, again uh, the tapered uh, components uh, will uh, result. Individually both the axis that is uh, main spindle axis uh, and tile stock axis uh, may be parallel uh, to the uh, spindle axis but uh, both the axis may be parallel uh, to carriage movement but they may not be coinciding that means the uh, heights uh, may be different from the guide base. So due to this when a job is uh, fitted between the centers the axis of job will not be parallel uh, to the carriage movement and tapered components uh, will uh, result. 
Now this uh, test uh, may not be conducted in the horizontal plane since uh, tile stock can be adjusted in the horizontal uh, plane. So while conducting this, this experiment that is during uh, taking the dial gauge uh, readings, tile stock and tile stock sleeve should be locked as in uh, normal working uh, condition. The magnetic stand of uh, the dial indicator is placed on the tool post and the plunger of dial indicator should be made to touch the mandrel uh, surface and then slowly the saddle is moved to the other end of the mandrel and then uh, the reading is uh, taken. The difference in readings uh, gives the alignment of uh, centers in uh, vertical uh, plane. Now you can uh, see in this uh, photograph the mandrel is uh, placed between uh, the live center and uh, dead center. The magnetic stand is placed on the tool post and the plunger is in contact with uh, the surface of uh, mandrel and then slowly the saddle is moved to the other end and then again the uh, reading, uh, dial indicator reading is uh, taken. The difference gives uh, the amount of uh, error. So this uh, Error should not exceed 0 0.06 millimeter per 300 millimeter moment of the saddle, and uh, if there is any uh, difference in heights, tile stock center should be higher than the head stock uh, center. The reason is with the continuous uh, usage of uh, tile stock, the bottom surface of the tile stock will will get uh, worn out, and uh, the height of uh, the tile stock center will. Uh, reduce. Now if the error is more than 0 0.06 millimeter then the bottom surface of the tile stock is uh, scraped and error is uh, brought within the limits. Now we will uh, discuss about uh, the axial slip of uh, the lead screw. You can see the lead screw which is used uh, during uh, thread cutting. The thrust face and collars of uh, the lead screw must be exactly square to the screw axis. That means uh, the thrust uh, face should be perpendicular to the axis of uh, the lead screw. Uh, normal uh, errors may be this uh, face, thrust face is not perpendicular to the axis. That means there is some inclination like this or maybe some irregularities uh, like this. Because of this, a cyclic uh, end bias movement is uh, set up, uh, which is of uh, the same nature as the axial uh, slip of the main uh, spindle. Uh, because of this uh, axial uh, slip, uh, a periodic uh, pitch uh, error will be additional to any true periodic uh, errors in the pitch of the screw. So during uh, uh, screw cutting, there will be error in uh, the cut uh, screws. Now in order to test this, uh, we have to put a steel ball as shown in this diagram and the plunger should touch uh, the steel ball and uh, the dial indicator will indicate. Uh, we have to slowly rotate uh, the screw and the dial indicator. Uh, will indicate if there is uh, any error. The axial slip should not exceed uh, 0.03 millimeter. Now with this uh, uh, we will conclude uh, module uh, 11 lecture number uh, 1. In this uh, lecture 1 we discussed about uh, the various aspects of uh, machine tool metrology the need for uh, machine tool metrology, uh, what are the various instruments used while conducting the machine tool metrology and uh, what are the different types of uh, uh, tests, alignment tests that is parallelism, perpendicularity and then whether uh, the movement of uh, the various elements is uh, parallel to the uh, lathe axis, uh, such things uh, we discussed and uh, geometrical tests on lathe various uh, tests conducted on that, that also we will discuss. With this uh, we will conclude lecture number 1. We will continue the discussion on the machine tool metrology in the lecture number 2. Thank you.